Ari, thank you very much for uh, for joining uh, joining us on stage today. Um, you know, first of all, what's your what's your background? How did you become an angel investor? Uh, I'm a former ent entrepreneur. Of course, I'm still like an entrepreneur nowadays. Angel is very near the entrepreneur. So I, I had a company. I developed that 20 years, and then it was bought by a bigger company 10 years ago. Uh, what did it do, your company? It was a software company, developing software for certain verticals, and we were working in in Nordics and in Poland, uh, Russia and China. Right, so uh, after exiting that company, you sort of bec you became a professional angel investor. Yeah, actually I started to mentor the uh, startups and do some board memberships, board memberships and then very quickly, of course, companies needed the money, I started to invest. Right, and so, uh, so far you have invested, I believe, in a quite a large number of companies. Yeah, I have invested 80 times, eight, eight zero times, but 24 to 24 companies. So in average, over three times per company. So I tend to participate to the follow-on rounds and, and also invested not directly, but also to some funds like 500 startups and Seed Camp, where, where, which is uh, investor in this GrabCat and TransferFice, also what, what Mike here mentioned, and also True Global Ventures and uh, then Spintop Ventures in the Nordic. Mm -hmm. Right. So with these 24 companies that you've invested in, um, wha you know, apart obviously from the money, what is the, what is the biggest value that you add as an investor? Yeah, the money is not the most important. The angels are adding more, more in a knowledge side and network. So we give the knowledge and experience and coaching and contacts to the benefit of the entrepreneur. I think it's more investing in knowledge than investing money. Money is also involved, but it's not the main part. It's only one part of the package of this marriage. I always say that this, this uh, investing to the startups is like a marriage. I don't know in this country how long, long the marriages are, but this ec angel investing, I investing, tend to be very long term. So everybody wants that the exit comes in the three or five years, but actually it takes nine to ten years. And at least in Finland, uh, the. This is longer, longer time than the average marriage. So I, I always said that, that this is like a marriage, but with the planned divorce. So divorce is the exit because the angel investor wants to get the return in some times. And that means exit, selling the shares to the other investors or selling the whole company or IPO. So how it's how a like a mari marriage uh, with a planned divorce. <laughs> right. Uh, how have your returns been doing? Yeah, I'm doing pretty well, I think so. I have three successful exits with three, uh, with uh, six times money packs to eight time money packs. So these all three exits has covered all, all my investments so far. And like in this business always happens, all companies don't, don't uh, skyrocket, let's say. And, and four companies uh, we have turned down. So I have an active portfolio of 17 companies still. Right. You know, when companies uh, raise money, um, very often you see um, you know, people going for a specific uh, amount, for a specific raise, the size, size, of, the size of the raise. Um, uh, very, very often there is less of a focus on who the investor is. Um, in, in your experience, um, w how would you differentiate angels and VCs in that sense? Yeah, of course there's some, some differenci differences, like angels are investing their own money. It's a private person investing to the non-listed company their own money. And the VC, is, uh, VC team is the team who is also investing a little bit of their own money, but the most money is other people's money. So maybe normally VC managers, they put one person, two, three person, or five person their own money, another is raised from, from other people. So they are investing other people's money and angels are investing own money. And that's the biggest difference and so angels don't need to invest. So if, for example, this year I don't want to invest, it's okay because I'm a private person, but uh, venture capital fund must invest. There's a certain time to invest all that money out and then trying to get the exit in, a, in the next year. So if they don't invest, they are not doing their job. Right, but at the same time they say that as an angel investor, you must invest at a certain rate Otherwise, you you was uh, increasing the risk of your portfolio, right? If you invest, let's say, only twice or three times. Yeah, yeah. O portfolio thinking is very important because these m most of the companies fail. 
we have done in Iban, where I'm a vice president also, together, the, together with the Paipar Saltuntash, who is here in the room from TPAA. Uh, we have made a study with the Kaufman Foundation, and the, the, there was this exit times and, and, and all this, and portfolio thinking, so 57% from the startups fail, according to that. So to get the return, Angel needs to create a portfolio and find at least at least one from the 10 should be very good company returning like a 10 times and one from the 30 should be returning like a 30 times and and so on then the returns will come right when you know when mike was announcing us he already mentioned uh, the the nordics is a very vibrant ecosystem uh, you've been active as an investor now for a bit less than 10 years right so you've really seen this growth um how, how, what has changed in finland over the last 8 years in terms of startups yeah, I think there's a lot of changes. For f first of all, we everybody know the Nokia company with mobile phones that didn't go so well anymore, and they started to sack people out. And so a lot of startups was created f with the former Nokia persons, 400 startups, and then also a lot of good engineers coming out from the Nokia. So startups has recruited engineers, o even they are corporate person and startup person, bit different. But anyhow, that has been a big big boost, then gaming, also gaming started partly from Nokia because Nokia was ordering games from these independent studios, but, but then when Nokia started to collapse and iPhone came up, those studios started to develop games to the iPhone. So also, also for example, Rovio has been doing subcontracting earlier to Nokia. And, and then I think the road models that we have Rovio with Angry Birds and Supercell with, with Clash of Clans and, and Heyday, I think those uh, has inspired the entrepreneurs that really from wh whatever country, like small country like Finland, you can come up to and be the number one in the market very quickly. Like Supercell is established 2010 and 2012 they already hit the, hit the market market with the number one product. So this kind of role models. Of course, the society also supports innovation and development with the governmental funds. And of course, there's a quite solid legislation and uh, predictable taxation and everything in our, our country. Right. You know, uh, so y you know, you've built a company, you have seen many, many startups, you've invested uh, in over 80 times in 24 companies. Um, what, are what are the things that entrepreneurs do right and wrong, maybe two different questions, but well, at least let's say, what would be your wish list for entrepreneurs? Like, how would you, how would be an, a perfect pitch from an entrepreneur, a perfect uh, proposal look like? Good question. I, I think what al already, already Kaushal here very, very nicely put, that uh, what turns down angel investor, for example, if, if I start that, what, what, is, what is not good? is that if there's too much arrogance that okay i know everything i only need your money that's uh, not working with with in our business model because we want to give angels want to give the knowledge and the networks to the benefit of the entrepreneur and and if if you are arrogant you are not coachable and you don't uh, listen listen i don't say that you need to listen as an entrepreneur everything what angels say but at least consider so i think arrogance is a big big uh, turn down some, some other things, some smaller things in the pitch. For example, if you have a traction, why in the hell you don't say it in the start? Because then everybody get interested, angels get interested on that. If you save it or you don't say it, so we get bored and okay, maybe you only talk and you don't have much, much to, to show. So tell the traction. And then also some small point that this nobody else has innovated this b before, no, no, uh, competition. 99.9% Ev .9 of the products has competition. If there's no competition, maybe there's no, no market. Then uh, one thing is that you, you might uh, approach the wrong angel. For example, if you are, you are creating medicines or some, something like that, or drugs or whatsoever, uh, you, you ca don't need to come to pitch to me because I don't invest on that area because angels invest only to that area where they have a knowledge otherwise they couldn't get this give out this knowledge and network to the entrepreneur so you need to do a little bit study before you start to approach angels and I would like to encourage entrepreneurs 
to uh, make a due diligence on angels because we make due diligence on you. Why don't you make due diligence on, on, aunt, on us? Call to other entrepreneurs where, for example, I have invested and ask, ask about what is the real uh, value added what this angel investor can give. So do you don't take a wrong, wrong angel, you have a wrong expectations. Mm -hmm. So I think those, those are maybe those, those uh, uh, from that side which turns down. Right. When, when Kashal was on stage, he specifically mentioned one thing that, you know, angels look for execution, right? That's one of the, one of the biggest things you look for. How do you, how do you gauge it? How do you, what are your tricks for understanding quickly enough whether an entrepreneur executes? Yeah, I think it's a background of the entrepreneurial entrepreneur team track record. What have they done uh, earlier? And I think that's the if if you need to do the investment decision quickly, that's the only way to. But if you don't need to do the investment decision very quickly, if there's no competition in the financing, then maybe I I tend to keep keep uh, process going it's like two to three months or two to four months and then see if the team is executing. Is there still develop a development happen or is it only a talk? So you follow them actually for yeah, a period? I follow them. I try to be very near use time with them and get to know them because we are investing to the people. Angels are investing to the people, not to the company. Right. Uh, apart from being a very active angel, you're also um, instrumental in building the angel community in Finland. You're uh, one of the founders of FIBAN, the Finnish Business Angel Network. Uh, you're a vice president of EBAN, together with uh, Bybars, as you mentioned. Um, what is what is the value of, of angel networks for, for angels? Yeah, very good question. I think there's a big value for both for entrepreneurs and angels. For angels, for example, it's a value when, when you are a rookie angel or wannabe angel. Uh, when you come to the market, if you, do, if you don't have a peer-to-peer -peer conversations or trainings and this kind of, maybe you do the fatal mistakes in the immediately, you invest too, too big sums and too, the too easily. So you, you, you learn from the other angels and uh, when, when, you, when you join the business angel network. For example, in here in Turkey, you have uh, 13 business angel networks. That's and you have a three zero or one three one one three one three one three, one three. One three with uh, with altogether five hundred business angels, and uh, that's a very good amount. And we, when knowing that you started only two, three, or four years ago, the whole market has developed very quickly. So I think it's a real benefit for the angel to belong to the angel network. And for the entrepreneur, why do ap approach through angel network? It's of course because you might have a local angel network or your vertical angel network, and maybe you don't know any, any angel who to approach. So angel network is a good start to go there because then you know that you can reach at least these angels who mm -hmm. belong to this network. So it's a point of contact right. for the entrepreneur. An easy, easy way because they are not hidden, hidden networks. There, there's a list and so on. Uh, for example, in Europe, we as an IBAN, we, we keep up the list of the, our members who are in all, all countries in Europe and also other market players. So there is a place where to go for the right. entrepreneur. Interesting. So, you know, one thing that I understand very well is like people like yourself, um, you know, someone who built a software company who now invests in other software companies. But how does it work with non-profile? Like, uh, do you work with also with angels that have made their money in something completely different? Because we know that in countries like Turkey, for instance, the vast majority of the capital is in construction, in retail, uh, in real estate, in tourism uh, here on the coast. Um, how do, do you see a lot of people from that background joining angel networks as well? Yes, that is when we have, for example, in Finland, that Supercell and Rovio, people start to get curious. Hey, what is this startup scene? Somebody's making here a lot of money. Like my friend invested in first round to, to Supercell, took the whole seat round. So he owned in a seven percent in a half exit of 1.1 billion billion uh, euros. So he got some uh, 80 million euros or something. So people are that's not normal. Angels don't get so big returns, <laughs> but uh, people start to look what is happening here. And now we see that a lot of people come to the startup scene from the who are normally invested to the stock stock market or real estate. And I think for them also, Angel Network is the best place to come in because then you can have a peer-to-peer -peer learning from the, those who do it as a profession. Because the most of the angels are, are not full-time. 85% of the angels are part-time and 
only 15% of the angels are full-time. And, and what angels invest in Europe, it's 5.5 billion euro so in a year. So it's a quite big amount of money. And, and that amount is growing, right? Yeah, it's growing so year by year. In, in states, it's something like $70 billion. Oh, I see. Okay. A bit higher still, but we are catching up. So you said that 85% are doing it part-time, but I also remember you saying once that um, for yourself it has it's, 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 uh, it's a bigger effort than your own company was, right? Yes, of course. The, the when I was an entrepreneur, I didn't need to work so much than now, <laughs> because now, now I'm working 12 or 13 hours a day and a half day of that in a weekend. But when I was an entrepreneur, I could keep, keep Saturdays free. But okay. when you have a 20 companies, something is happening in one company, all the time is something happening and you must be online all the time, 24-7, 20, and help the entrepreneur when, when that is needed. It, it, it cannot be like, okay, let's come back after two weeks. Right, okay. Maybe a last question about, about Turkey. Um, have, you, have you invested in Turkish companies? Uh, I'm very interested to invest, but not yet directly, but indirectly, yeah, through 500 startups I have, okay. I have invested. And as we know, 500 startups are starting up in Turkey soon. Uh, they're launching here. So yeah, also a local fund, yeah. Okay, interesting. But, but I meant uh, Silicon Valley fund. Right, okay. Wonderful. Okay, Ari, thank you very much for this, and um, good luck with, uh, with the angel investment work, and we hope to see you more in the region here. Yeah, thank you. Can I say still one word? Please. I would like to that you understand, every entrepreneur understand why, why angels invest. It's, it's of course that we want to pass our, our knowledge and network forward, but also to make exits, to get the good returns. So we are not philanthropic organization and we, we live from exit together with you. Exit is the payday for you entrepreneurs and for us too. So, so this we are in a business doing exits, not doing investments because when we invest, money goes out from us. But when we do the exit, money comes in and that's what we like. Exit it is then. Thank you very much. Ari Korhonen, please give a big applause.